Hey guys, we've got a pretty cool one on the shop floor today. It's a awesome green HSV GDSR with an LSA fitted to it. So we're going to be putting baby camshaft in it, some valve springs, new blower snout, a few other bits and pieces. Rich is going to take it from here and explain yeah, pretty much step by step the process. Hope you guys enjoy. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm replacing the valve springs. Um, some people pull the heads off. We're in a fortunate enough position that we've got tools so that we don't have to go that far. So what I've done is I've put compressed air into the cylinder that holds the valves up while I release the, the collets from the, the valve stems, stops the valves from dropping into the cylinder and then I can replace the valve springs on the car. Just about to refit the supercharger back onto this LSA. It's had the upgraded snout, which has allowed us to put a smaller uh, supercharger pulley on it, as well as the injectors done. I fitted some insulators between the cylinder head and the supercharger, and there'll also be some insulators that are fitted between the supercharger and the lid of it. They're made out of ABS plastic, which keeps intake temperatures cooler. So on this supercharger, we fitted the VCM upgraded snout to this supercharger. There's a few good benefits behind it. Is it's a straight flow, uh, which allows for a more direct path for the air. It flows more than a CNC ported stock snout. It allows for the direct fitment to the VCM over the radiator style intake, and it's also beneficial because we're able to change pulley sizes on the supercharger. So this will all get back together now and, and get on the dyno shortly. Fitting the supercharger coolant tank has allowed the ratio to increase from 2 litres to 12 litres. So fitting the expansion tank for the uh, supercharger cooling system, uh, it sits on the inside of the, uh, the bonnet um, engine bay. So basically what we've done is this, the outlet pipe here, runs through a little cavity in the bottom there where there's a grommet that you remove along the outside of the chassis rail and back inboard into the engine bay just along here. So I've just wrapped it up in a little bit of sheath to give it a bit of extra protection. We'll bring the car down, I'll show you the way the rest of the circuit works. So the expansion tank for the um, cooling system for the supercharger sits up here in this cavity. Uh, we do have to pull the scuttle and everything off to get to it. We run the hoses through. Um, no LSA comes with a reservoir for the cooling system for the supercharger. The way the circuit works is the reservoir feeds the pump, the pump then pushes the water through the heat exchanger in front of the car, comes out of the heat exchanger into the top of the supercharger where the brick is, passes through the supercharger and out the bottom and then returns to the reservoir through the bottom of the brick. So like I mentioned earlier in this video, we did upgrade the supercharger snout to the VCM style one which allows us to use an over the radiator style intake, so I'm going to bang that on now. So essentially the way that the standard air intake works is there's an air box over in the corner. We're provided with a little blanking cover for that. The OTR comes with all the brackets you need and everything to fit it. And then obviously it just sits over the top of the throttle body. And uh, there is all the everything you need basically to do a the air temp sensor as well as the breathing system as well. So it all clamps down neatly with some body clips with some uh, nice dress trims for the side. One of the features of the uh, Aeroflow reservoir that we've fitted is it comes with this large grommet which allows you to uh, essentially hole saw a hole in the scuttle that gives you easy access to the, uh, the lid and the reservoir. So we've fitted the baby camshaft and all the other components. Now it's prepped, ready to go on the dyno, make some noise, make some power, make some torque. So Rob's going to take it from here.
Okay, so we finally got this GDSR on the dyno after all the modifications, the big injectors, the camshaft, the intake. We do spend quite a fair bit of time with HP tuners. We carry out a mathless tune, we rescale all the injectors, spend a lot of time with the um, idle side of it, also the drivability. The real important factor is, is getting the drivability right so it still behaves and drives like a standard vehicle so your wife's quite happily uh, happy to hop in it and drive it and be quite safe and don't have to worry about the thing stalling and obviously the results speak for themselves with some awesome power and torque figures as you can see by the dyno graph so all in all you know the more time you spend on the tuning side of it the better result you get all round so yeah happy days for everyone <laughs>